now a brief moment of silence for J.K. Rowling's career. Woo! Welcome to the month after Pride, Wrath. I promised myself I would never make another video about her, and yet... I know, I know, I don't really want to be making this video either, but apparently she's the Energizer Bunny of transphobia, so... Oh god, that's disgusting. All right, let's get into this fuck shit. I'm your host, Not For Possession, Narcissa DeVille, and welcome to hell. I know I've made videos about this in the past before, but because it's become recently relevant, I thought I would take time to discuss this and put this into a greater context. Um, as an aside, I'd like to say that this is the last time I'm gonna be talking about J.K. Rowling, but I'm pretty sure I've made that promise before and we all know how that turned out. I also won't be using the term TERF for this video because I don't think TERF is an appropriate term for anyone. Not because it's a slur as some anti-trans zealots would have you believe, but because there's nothing radical or feminist about trans exclusionary politics. You're just an asshole. These women are not feminists. If anything, I'd venture to guess they're far right politicians and feminist drag, masquerading as feminists in order to gain the trust of other feminists and destroy them from the inside. I would even go so far as to posit the question of, are these even women at all? If women are, as you say, too polite to tell a trans person that they don't pass, by your own admission, I don't really think you qualify. It must be so hard to have your politics and your gender criticized by a stranger on the internet who knows nothing about you. I can't imagine how that feels. These are the sort of people that J.K. Rowling has decided to align herself with repeatedly, both in liking tra anti-trans tweets and following actively anti-trans accounts. It may behoove us to understand that this content probably wouldn't be coming up in her timeline if she wasn't following it to some degree. And worse still, if she didn't espouse these ideas to some amount, wouldn't she use her platform to call them out? JK Rowling is notoriously known for taking people she disagrees with to task via Twitter, from Trump to even Piers Morgan, who is his own anti-trans self, so that's a whole other conversation. She's talked about political discussions both in the UK and the US, so she's not exactly an apolitical figure. As a general rule, JK Rowling has been very vocal in her political opinions in the past. Whether or not you think JK Rowling is herself transphobic, one has to wonder if she's vocal about so many political topics, her silence on this issue becomes particularly deafening. And what response she has given to this particular controversy isn't so much an outright denial of transphobia as much as it is gaslighting us to change the conversation entirely, suggesting she's simply too old and she accidentally liked tweets that were transphobic. This person who got into a Twitter war with Piers Morgan accidentally liked multiple transphobic tweets and followed several transphobic accounts. But here's the thing, because many trans exclusionary so-called radical, including some of the names that JK Rowling follows, have compared trans women to blackface actors and have suggested that women are simply too nice to tell trans women that they don't pass. And if that's not emblematic of a larger problem, a white cis lesbian comparing trans women to blackface and suggesting women are too nice, I don't know what is. It's worth noting that a lot of trans exclusionists like to make themselves out to be pioneers of changing the way we look at gender as a whole. Many claim to want to do away with gender altogether while still actively utilizing gender politics to their advantage. There's something rather hilarious about suggesting that women are both equal to men in one breath and suggesting that they're too nice to tell you you're not pretty in another breath. Trans exclusionists like to spout the idea that you can't change biology, that taking hormones doesn't change the biological factors that make one a man or a woman. But speaking purely from a scientific standpoint, that isn't exactly true. Biology is often being changed by scientists. We have whole breeds of animals that prove that. More to the point, the effects of hormone replacement therapy, which many trans people undergo during their transition, actually actively changes biological factors. It lessens muscle mass and changes fat distribution and therefore does completely change your biology. Not to mention the fact that our cells actually change every seven years. So if you were transitioning for the last seven years and you were on hormones, 
your cells have never even seen testosterone. But here's the unfortunate reality. Most people don't actually care about these facts. No one cares about the statistics or the research. They just want to believe that they're superior or stronger, and no matter what evidence I cite, it's not going to change their beliefs. And here's the conundrum I face. Because if I don't cite facts, suddenly I'm just expressing my feelings, which some may argue are not more important than science. Ironically, unless it's the feelings of anti-abortion activists or the Catholic Church or whatever corporation is against me this week. My own lived experience is relegated to simply being about my feelings and therefore it no longer counts in a scientific conversation. That none of the arguers against trans people have actually ever read any science or studies doesn't really matter. The onus is on me as the trans person to prove that I exist and that what I know about myself is valid. The funny thing is, in many ways, in this post-facts Trump world, some people would argue that facts matter more than ever. But you can't really argue with someone who doesn't fundamentally see you as a human. Any person who believes that you can't change biology and that men and women are simply too different to change sex don't really care if the facts and research aren't on their side because they'll just claim fake news and fake science. No matter how many articles or research papers suggest that trans people are real and that you are wrong, it doesn't matter. No matter how much the science doesn't support you, it's not going to change people's opinions that don't believe that trans people are human and deserving of equal treatment. And honestly, in a way, that's fine with me because I'm not really affected by most of these arguments. I'm a white, cis-passing trans woman who's way too blessed to be bothered with your transphobic nonsense. I have a great job and great friends and family. Most of my coworkers already know that I'm trans, so I don't stand to lose anything. A lot of the people most affected by these arguments are trans people of color who can lose their housing, who can lose their jobs, who can lose everything they hold dear because someone believes that their gender identity isn't real and isn't valid. And these are the people that JK Rowling stands behind. When I say I can't support her because she's transphobic, I'm not talking about freedom of speech. I'm talking about the consequences of what she says and who she supports. She can say what she wants, but her words have consequences and her words have reach. Whether she recognizes it or not, she's co-signing the idea that trans women are either fetishizing a cis woman's experience exists solely to harm cis women, and that's a problem. Ironically, by aligning herself with transphobe, she's co-signing the very far-right politics she so often claimed to be against. Trans exclusionists have often leaned on far-right politicians to pass anti-trans legislation like the bathroom bill in North Carolina. It doesn't just stop there. Once you get into bed with the far right, you're getting into bed with religious extremism. You're getting into bed with gun violence and pray away the gay camp. You're getting into bed with anti-LGBT laws and the rolling back of voting rights for people of color and rolling back of abortion rights for women everywhere. When you get into bed with the far right in order to screw over trans people, you ultimately get into bed with something that screws over everyone, including yourself. And I'm sure plenty of people want to argue that even if she did say she wasn't actually transphobic and made any kind of actual statement or apology about this, that people like me would still have something to say about it and still be mad at her. But that's the thing. I don't want to dislike her. I don't want to feel upset about any of this. I don't want to be making these videos. Because the reality is, JK Rowling has been a central figure to my childhood. I looked up to her as a fellow creator who took herself from nothing to where she is today. I admired her in a way I can't possibly begin to explain. She was a single mother who was roughly the same age as my mother and changed the face of literature in a way that cannot be understated and created many characters that still to this day resonate with me. I mean, I'm wearing a Slytherin outfit for God's sakes. But that's what makes this particular issue and so many other problematic things she's done lately so heartbreaking. Because I know I'm not alone here. Hundreds of thousands of young creatives, many of them somewhere on the LGBTQIA spectrum, looked up to JK Rowling and feel incredibly let down by all of this. This isn't about hating her. It's never been about hating her or even being mad at her. If anything, I'm disappointed. I'm not saying, by the way, that I think she should be canceled or that you can't love and support Harry Potter, but I think it's important that we recognize who the person that created all of this is and what she stands behind and supports. I'll be honest, a lot of this taints how I view the original series. Luckily, I have fanfiction for that. Now available on archiveofourown.com.
I wish this wasn't the reality, but the fact is, JK Rowling is transphobic, and if we sweep this under the rug, we're only hurting ourselves in the long run. And by the way, if you see me as less than human because I'm trans, then we really have nothing else to discuss. I'm less than human because I'm a demon. Get it right. Welcome to hell indeed. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give it a like, comment down below, and subscribe to this channel. And if you really want to stick it to JK Rowling, consider donating to queer fan artists and creators like myself by donating to my Patreon slash Ko-Fi. Links in the description below. Bye! Well, I mean, I didn't even swallow, so it's fine. <laughs> it's worth noting that a lot of trans exclusion... <laughs>